Welcome back to Las Vegas. It's theCUBE live at AWS reInvent 2021. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We have two live sets, continuous CUBE coverage. That's what we mean by that. Two remote sets, over 100 guests on the program at reInvent 21. Lots of content. We are running one of the largest hybrid tech events with AWS and its enormous ecosystem of partners. Talking about the next decade of cloud innovation. Dave and I are pleased to welcome John Purcell, the Chief Product Officer of Do It International to the program. John, how's it going? It's going well, it's nice to meet you both. Thanks for having Likewise, me. Likewise, nice to meet you as well. Talk to us about Do It. Who are you guys, what do you do, and then we'll talk about your relationship with AWS. Sure, Lisa, yeah. So, so we're a global technology company, and our mission is pretty simple. Uh, companies are embracing the public cloud at an incredible rate, as we all, that's why we're here, right? Uh, and we simply set out to help them do that well, right? Help them be successful, drive objectives that they've got in terms of why they originally adopted the cloud in the first place. Um, we have a pretty unique value proposition, I would say. We do three things uh, with companies like this. Um, first is we resell you the public cloud, so we will, you will build through us. Uh, and as, uh, uh, as a follow-up to that, um, we do three things. We provide an intelligent technology portfolio that's available to you to use. Um, we provide an advanced set of advisory and consulting services available to you. And we provide uh, 24 by seven unlimited technical support, both for our technology and for your cloud. And all of that is available to you at no additional cost as a, as a client to do it. So it's a pretty unique value proposition. Got it, okay. And so, so tell me about some of the things that you've noticed in the last 22 months with the pandemic, we've seen this massive acceleration of digital transformation, cloud adoption, obviously every company now becoming a data company or if they're not, they're not going to be around much longer. Have you seen any industries in particular that are really common to do it saying, guys, help us out, we, we've got to move fast? Sure, um, so you know, there are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, depends on, on what count you, you, you believe or when you read it, uh, but these are all companies who are adopting the cloud, they've bought into the promise of the cloud, and this has been going on now for a few years, perhaps a decade, certainly AWS has been doing this for, for 15 years now, um, and we simply saw, certainly during the pandemic, uh, an acceleration of that, but we particularly focus on companies who are already in the cloud, they're poised for growth, they're technology savvy in many cases, in almost all cases, uh, and these are specifically who we target. They don't need remedial sort of level uh, assistance. They're technical experts, so to speak, and so we can sort of provide an additional level of, of help for their most complex uh, but still essential problems, and so they're the tier of companies we mostly focus and, on. And you said earlier, you do the billing, you have a, 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 a basically white labeling the cloud? <laughs> that is our primary business, Dave, yeah. yes. We, we will resell you, so you consume all of the same services, all of the same technology that you can be take benefit from in the public cloud. You simply transact through Do It. Okay, so I'm trying to square the circle between you have highly technical people that obviously can figure out cloud pricing on their own, but yet at the same time, you're that layer between, which simplifies things. Is that because the highly complex teams want to, or technical teams want to spend time doing other stuff, or? That's like primarily, I think that's a good insight, Dave. I think a lot of companies, whether you're born in the cloud or migrating to the cloud, you're doing it for a set of reasons that I think are well established at this point. It's agility, it's acceleration, it's competitive resistance, it's I need to be able to take advantage of the newest and, and most emerging technologies. Uh, but something happens on your way to the cloud. There's a set of management responsibilities that in many cases have been around as long as IT has been around, but don't disappear just because you've chosen to build your business in the cloud. And so when companies look to do it, what we can provide for them is a level of assistance to alleviate some of that management burden. And again, these are not companies who, who, who are looking at very basic, simple, entry-level questions like what, which cloud should I choose? These are companies who in many cases have chosen a cloud, they're operating, they've built infrastructure, they have a cloud estate, and they're poised for that growth, right? So in many cases it's, am I architected for scale? Am I secure across the entire surface area? Uh, am I, have I chosen the right technologies for the next phase of the business evolution? So you're an accelerant. We're an accelerant. Most people. And large, medium, small, yes, all of the above? All, all of the above, Dave, I would say. If, if you're a company that's in the cloud, you are technically savvy, and you're poised and ready for growth, we're interested to talk to you, we can provide support. I want to get your point of view on something, John. So, initially the cloud, you know, a lot of small, when, when Amazon turned the, the cloud into an API, it allowed small companies to, comp to have data center infrastructure the same as big companies compete. 
And then the big companies caught on and they had this, was undergoing this massive IT transformation. I don't know if you saw the Goldman deal this morning. Goldman Sachs is basically creating a Uber super cloud on top of AWS, allowing their hedge funds access to their data, their tooling, essentially their SaaS that they've built. So the big guys are like, they almost have an advantage now. That's a highly technical thing to do. Yeah. And I wonder if the, if the little guys in this next transformation to get left out, can, can you help? Is that, is that something you do? What do you think about that sort of balance of power, if you will, between small and, and big? Well, I think it's really about what your success objectives are. I mean, Goldman Sachs is a global, global banking, global financial services company. Yeah. They have a different set of expectations to satisfy their global demand, their clients, their companies, their portfolios. Uh, you know, the need is simply one of scale, I would say. What are the real value propositions that you're trying to provide to your customer base? And whether you're a, a 10 person startup, you know, with, with a modest level of infrastructure and spend in the cloud, or you're Goldman Sachs, interestingly, a lot of the problems are, are consistent and similar between the two, right? The cloud is dynamic. It's, it's by its very nature, it's an elastic thing, right? It scales up, it scales down, it ebbs and it flows. So the dynamic and, and constant or continuous rate of change poses similar sets of problems for Goldman, just as it would for any of the startups you see. And the problem is getting it right? Is getting it right, maintaining an awareness of what's going on, making sure that you're spending the right amount of money on the right services, you're what we call rate optimized, uh, and making sure that you're secure, you know, that you have visibility into what's changing, uh, the beauty of the cloud, the promise of the cloud, is that we can have compute memory and storage whenever we want it, right. drop of a hat. The flip side of that is anyone can get it whenever they want within your organization. And so maintaining some sort of control and governance over that process is the same for large and small. So then where are you having customer conversations? You talked about the, kind of the maturation level of the customers that you are working with, large and small, but where are your conversations? Are they within the IT stack? Are they higher level? Knowing that you know, you've got organizations that already obviously understand the value of the cloud, but need to optimize it, need to grow, need to scale. Has that conversation elevated, especially in the last 22 months? I think, Traditionally, movements to the cloud and the kinds of problems we end up focusing on are very engineering, DevOps, who cares about scale, who cares about sort of choosing the right technology problem, you know, solving the right technology problems. But increasingly, when you fuse technology and the scale of technology with how do you pay for it, how do you budget for it, how do you govern it, right? And how do you make sure that the rollout into the cloud is done proportional to your business expectations. It's indexed to things like business growth. That's where you see that overlap between, let's say, finance and engineering. And creating a common language for both of those constituents to use when we talk about, you know, we need to budget for our spend. That's really difficult to do in the cloud. It's not as simple as just look up a price sheet and away we go. It's so dynamic. It, it creates a, a, a really interesting problem and a very hard problem. Now you guys have done a nine figure raise, so obviously there's, you're more than a consultancy. You've got a tech stack of your own. Maybe you could talk about your portfolio. Sure, so um, we are a technology company and we invest uh, in, in a couple of key, I would say three key areas in order to help solve the problems we're talking about. Number one is what we call analytics that matter, right? Um, one of the hardest things to keep track of because of the dynamic nature of cloud infrastructure is what's coming and going and what is it costing? What is, it, what is the true cost to the business? And how do we put some governance around that in the form of budgets and so forth? Um, but making sense of that from one company to the next, they're very inconsistent. Your business looks different to my business, looks different to the next person's business. So creating a set of insights that are relevant specifically to your business is a, is a tricky proposition. So that's why we call it analytics that matter to you. Right, so that's a big, big area of investment in the, in the tech portfolio. The second area we invest in is what we call um, cost, simply cost savings, right? So once you know what your spend base looks like, once you know what's going where, the trick then is to find ways to optimize that. It's not always about reducing cost. This is sort of a common, you know, you hear this a lot in the industry. How do I reduce my cost? It's about optimizing it to the right level so that Increasing costs might be fine if your business is growing. So our goal is to provide smart software that helps you find the right rate 
for your unit of consumption and then use software to automatically apply that. And then the third area, if I could, if I could just, just uh, finish yeah, on that note, uh, is what we call proactive governance. And that's simply, the most basic form of financial governance is a, is a budget, right? How can we set a budget and then look for situations where we might be in jeopardy of breaching that or exceeding what we've set, uh, you know, what we've set as our governance control. So, so where in those three areas do you, do you use machine intelligence? All three? I mean, maybe you could talk about how you're injecting yeah. AI into your yeah, portfolio. Yeah, that's, that's great. So we use it in as many places as we think is, is relevant. So certainly when you're looking at large data sets, for example, billing and usage data, leveraging advanced algorithms like sort of various machine learning techniques to help you look for patterns, to help you derive, you know, look at, sort of project forward looking expectations based on what you've seen up to date is a really interesting machine learning use case. And so when we're looking at forecasts, this is your spend month to date, this is where we expect you'll finish the month, very common and a sort of intuitive use case. Right. When you set a budget, we can predict for you pretty accurately when you will hit that limit or the thresholds on the way to that limit. And then one of the final ways we, we leverage machine learning today is what we call anomaly detection. So we talked about it, a lot of things changing, not always intentional, not always for, for the betterment of the business. So if something happens in your cloud estate that was, a, for example, a mistake or a misconfiguration, and it creates a spike in usage or it creates what we might say is anomaly, unexpected behavior, we can catch that, we can look at the patterns, catch that, and then take action. So those are sort of the three most common areas we use machine learning today. Can you give us an example of a customer that you think that you're working with, you think that really articulates the value of what Doit is enabling and what you're delivering customers? Well, um, it's like picking your favorite child, <laughs> right? We, are, we, we, we work with over 1,500 customers today around the world uh, of various sizes as, 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 we, as we discussed earlier. Um, the range of, of challenges and problems they bring to us is wide and varied and that's one of the big challenges that we're working hard to, to try to maintain uh, pace, to keep pace with, right? So we're working very hard. You can imagine when, when a company is choosing a technology partner, like Do It, you've got to earn that trust. Right? You've got to earn their trust because you're taking action sometimes on their behalf using software, right? So we've got to work hard to earn it, we've got to demonstrate it, and then we've got to keep it. Right, so especially in the world of, of SaaS and cloud, you're just always, you're always re-earning and re-upping that trust. So I'd rather not pick a favorite customer, that they're all, they're, all, they're all favorites of mine. I should ask early on, what is cloud to you? Is it purely public cloud or is it a hybrid? Is it it's, it's public cloud primarily, yeah. that's, where we, that's where we focus. So, so if, you're a, if you're a growing company, poised for growth, using one or more public clouds, that's our sweet spot. And, and what's your roadmap look like? Give us a little, perspective on yeah. where you're headed. With yeah, this. so um, our roadmap, so we have a, 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 I would say, a pretty rich um, and rather daunting, I would say, uh, strategy of, uh, that we need to execute over the next 12 to 18 months, and it's driven primarily, Dave, by the problems that we talked about that our customers bring to us, right? That's the beauty of working in a company that's both a technology, a deep technology company, and an advisory, sort of has it a strong advisory and consultancy angle, yeah. right? The problems we hear about are real operational, you know, real world problems. They're not sort of, here's a problem we think you should have and you don't know you have and here's a solution to it that you may not have known existed. These are problems mostly reacting to things we deal with on a daily basis, right? So um, whether it's analytics and insights as we talked about, whether it's cost savings and making sure that we can apply rate optimization across compute, memory, storage, network, you know, you name it, anywhere that you can, you can derive, for example, discounts or savings in the cloud, we need to be able to automatically uh, apply those. And then finally, the proactive governance is, is a big, big area of focus for us over the course of 22. And so we'll continue to sort of invest broadly and deeply across, across each of those areas. Last question for you as we wrap up here. You know, one of the things that we talk about with AWS all the time is their, hey, we work backwards from the customer first, that sort sure. of customer obsession. It sounds like you were talking about from an advisory perspective that the customers that do it works with are really influential on that roadmap that you just talked about and on the direction that you guys are taking the company. I would say uh, one of the things that you'll find as, a, as when you talk to product people and companies, and you probably know yourself, is that you always want to have more customer interaction. You can never have enough because there's nothing worse than investing, building, shipping, and it's sort of, it's not used, right? So, so for us, um, I'm delighted. I mean, this is one of the first companies I've worked for that has a really rich and dynamic and very deeply qualified set of, 
of customer interaction and feedback. So it's, I, I, you know, my colleagues will appreciate when I say it's rather easy to sort of pick the things that we know are going to be truly valuable and truly used. So it is, um, you know, it was mentioned, uh, Adam mentioned it in the AWS keynote yesterday about from customer backwards. Yes. We're very much the same and we have a strong set of customers that are vocal and we're delighted to have them. Excellent, John, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program talking about what you guys are doing and how you're, how you're helping businesses really accelerate in every industry. We appreciate your insights it's and your time. It's been a pleasure to meet you both, thank you. Likewise. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE at AWS reInvent. theCUBE, the global leader in live tech coverage.